Welcome back, math enthusiasts. In today's video, we're diving into the exciting world of profit and loss. Whether you're studying for your 11 plus exam, your GCSE exam, or just curious about how money works, understanding profit and loss is essential. So get ready to sharpen your math skills and unlock the secrets of financial success. So what are profit and loss and how does it work? Well, these are fundamental concepts in business and finance. Profit on one hand is the positive difference between the revenue earned and the expenses incurred, indicating that financial gain. And on the other hand, loss occurs when the expenses exceed the revenue, resulting in a negative difference. But how do we calculate these values? Let's find out. So in this particular question, we see that a store bought a batch of 100 shirts at $10 each. So let's assume the cost price of each shirt is $10. It then states that the store sold 80 shirts at $15 each. So again, if we calculate the revenue from selling 80 shirts, that's 80 multiplied by 15, and that gives us 1,200. And then the revenue from selling the remaining shirts at $8 each would again be 100, take away 80, which gives us 20, and we multiply that by $8, and that gives us $160. So now let's go ahead and add that together. We have 1,200, 160, and that gives us 1,360. So if we take a look at our profit or loss, we'll do our total revenue minus the total cost, which again is 1,360 minus 1,000, and we're left with 360. So the overall profit made by the store was $360. And there we are. Marvellous, you're off to a good start. Let's keep it up and go into question two. Sarah bought a laptop for $800 and sold it for $950. What was her profit percentage? This is quite important now. So we know our cost price was 800. And let's calculate our profit by doing 950, what she sold it for, take away the 800, which was the cost price, and we're now left with $150. So in order to calculate the profit percentage, you always have your profit divided by the cost price, which means 150 divided by 800 times by 100. And that there, once calculated, which you could simplify as 15 over 80 times 100, would give you 18.75%. So Sarah's profit percentage was approximately this value. Marvellous work. Let's keep it up. Question number three. A company purchased 200 units of a product for $5 each. So instantly we know that's 200 multiplied by five. That's $1,000 right there. Due to the increase in demand, they had to sell the remaining units at a discounted price of $3 each. And if the company sold 150 units, what was their overall profit and loss? So now that we've gone ahead and calculated the first part, let's sell our remaining ones at $3 each. So again, we'll take our cost, which is $1,000. We'll then use that to calculate our cost, which was $3 each for 150. So three multiplied 150 gives you $450. So now we know that is how much we have gained from this. So again, we do a thousand, which is our cost, take away 450, and that gives us 550. So again, as you can see, by looking at our profit or loss, we can see here, that our loss is of $550, which can be seen as 55%. Marvellous work. Okay, let's move in to our next question. A shopkeeper bought a toy for $15 and sold it for $20. Now, after giving a 10% discount to a customer, the shopkeeper had a profit of $2. So what was the original selling price of that toy? Well, Let's assume the original selling price of the toy is X dollars. Now, once we've got that as X dollars, we then will have the selling price after the 10% discount. 
So 100 is what we start with, take away the 10%. So we're left with 90%. And that's the X being the selling price of the toy. Now, in order to get the profit, we need, that's going to be the selling price after the discount minus the cost price. So obviously, we will start with $2, which will equal 0.9x minus the $15. And now that we've done that, we can simply take the $15 over. So we now have $17, which equals 0.9x. And if we make x the subject by taking the 0.9 over, we then know x will equal 17 divided by 0.9, which will give us approximately 18.89. And that's your dollars. So the original selling price of the toy was $18.89. Marvellous. Let's go for the next one. Mike bought a bicycle for $200 and spent an additional $50 on repairs. He sold the bike for $300. What was his profit percentage? So the total cost is $200 plus $50. So that's $250 but he then sold it for 300. So if we subtract that, he made a profit of $50. But now let's calculate the percentage pro uh, profit there. So all we need to merely do is take our amount, which is our profit, divide it by the total cost, which is 250, and then times that by 100. Again, you can just do five over 25, which is seen as 20%. And that is your answer. So Mike's profit percentage is 20%. Okay, let's go to the next question. A company purchased 500 pens for $2,500 and they sold 400 pens for $4 each. And the remaining pens at a discounted price of $3 each. So what was their overall percentage profit? Well, so to determine the overall profit or loss of the company, we need to calculate the total cost and total revenue. So let's look at the cost per pen. Again, we're going to do 2,500 divided by 500 pens, and that gives us $5. I was going to do pounds there. And so the revenue from selling 400 pens at $4 each, once again, is going to be 400 times by four, which gives us $1,600. And now the revenue from selling the remaining pens at a discounted price of $3 each. Again, we know we had 500 pens and 400 are sold. So that's 100 remaining. We can times that by three, so we get $300. So that's 300 and 1600. If we add that together, that gives us 1900. And now, so to calculate the overall profit or loss, all we will do is simply take 1900 and subtract the cost, which is 2500, and we're left with a minus of $600. So that is the overall loss that they have incurred. Beautiful work. Okay, let's go for the next question. John bought a camera for $400 and sold it for $350. So what was his percentage loss? Well, instantly we know if we have 400, subtract 350, that gives us $50. So the loss is $50, but they're looking for the percentage here. So this is where we have 50 over the cost, which is 400. Again, it can be five over 40 or one over eighth. And then we have to times that by 100, and that gives us 12.5%. So John's loss percentage was approximately 12.5%. A bakery bought 100 cakes for $3 each. So that instantly, you would now know that's $300. And due to the high demand, they increased the selling price to $5 each. So again, all we need to merely do is calculate our profit firstly, which is five take with three, which gives us $2 on each cake. Now then, in order to calculate that percentage profit, we'll have two divided by the cost price, and then we times that by 100. So we're left with 66.6 .6 recurring, and that is our percentage profit. Marvelous. Let's go for the next question. A store purchased 50 shirts at $20 each. 
and sold them at a 25% discount. If the selling price of each share after the discount was $15, what was the overall profit or loss? So let's assume the cost price of the shirt is $20 and the selling price after a 25% discount is going to be $15. So again, if we talk about the selling price before the discount, that would be 100 divided by 75 times by 15, and that should give us $20. But now in order to calculate the overall profit or loss, that's the selling price minus the cost price. So again, the selling price minus the cost price, which is zero. So the overall profit or loss made by the store was zero dollars. Okay, and the final question. Tom bought a pair of shoes for $80 and sold them for $60. So what was his loss percentage? Well, we instantly know that it's a minus 20. So all we need to do is our value over the total times by 100, and that's a minus 25%. And so Tom's loss percentage was approximately 25%. And that wraps up our profit and loss math journey today. We hope you've gained valuable insights into this crucial aspect of mathematics. Remember, understanding profit and loss is a powerful tool, not just for your 11 plus and GCSE exams. So join us next time as we delve into another exciting math topic. Stay curious and keep exploring the world of numbers.